Now we saw in the previous video how one can calculate the work it takes to move an object. Uh, if that force remains constant throughout the entire journey, it's fairly simple, just force times distance. Now suppose that the force is variable throughout the journey. As we push something along, uh, like let's for example say we have some object, we'll just draw it as a box right here, and we want to push it forward and then, of course, we're the frictional force is the thing we have to be worried about, right? As we push it along the ground, there's rubbing and such. But what if, like, the friction changes with time, right? Maybe the material or it gets just kind of, uh, we have to go up and down or whatever. It could very well be that as we push this thing along, our force function changes based upon our location. So if we think of it as, like, we start at x equals 0 and we're trying to move over to some other location down the road, uh, we look at a specific location x, the force it takes to push it at that moment could be a function of its location f of x. So if we wanted to calculate the force, or the work, excuse me, to move the object from location 0, or we could call it location a, over here to location b, how might we do that? Well, if the function of force is variable, what we could do is we could slice up our domain into teeny tiny little pieces, right? Um, we call the first one, the first slice x1, x2, x3, uh, continue on, we'll have some place in the middle, xi minus one, xi. And so then we think of just, just look at one subinterval right here, xi minus one to xi. Let's on this piece assume, assume that force is constant for this small section, right? Uh, we'd have to pick a representative. We'll say the force will be equal to x, f of xi star, where xi star is some number uh, that sits inside this interval, right? So we choose it somehow, xi star. And so the force is equal to f of xi star just for that interval. For the next interval, we pick a different force. For the next one, we pick a different force. So we'll assume that it's constant on that little chunk, in which case then the work the work of pushing it from, we'll call this the work wi, the work from pushing it from xi minus 1 to xi would then be the force, which as we're assuming is constant, would be f of xi star. And then we times it by the distance. How far do you have to go? Um, well, the, the, the distance you have to go is from xi minus 1 to xi. And as all of these things are equally spaced, the distance you would have to go is delta x right here. So this wi gives you the work to do one of these little segments, all right? But there's a lot of these segments. There's the first one, the second one, the third one, etc. right? If we add up the work to do the first one with the one to do the second one with the one to do the third one and go until the end, if we take the sum of those things, that gives us an approximation of the work that's necessary to be done. But there's going to be error to it because we're assuming, right? There's an assumption there that the work, the force is constant from one point to another. Well, to, to have less error and to be more accurate, we could shrink these intervals to be smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller. Kind of sounds like the area problem we've done before. Uh, this is our technique of accumulation here. We just make the subintervals get smaller and smaller, smaller, and thus we get more accurate calculations. The best we could do is to make these intervals be infinitesimally small. That is, we could take an infinite number of these subdivisions. If we take the limit as the number of subdivisions goes to infinity, uh, this would calculate the work to move from point A to point B. But as this is now the limit of a Riemann sum, this becomes an integral. And so this is the takeaway we want to get from this, is that the work, uh, work is equal to the integral of force with respect to distance, where here we're denoting your position function as x. So if we integrate force with respect, with respect to position, we get our work quantity here. And that's a very nice way of taking the simple uh, constant work problem we saw before, and we can make it a variable work by using this integral. And this is what we've seen before with volume problems, with area problems. This is what we call this strategy of, a, of accumulation or strategy of integration. If we can solve a problem, when uh, we can assume things are what we call linear. If we can solve the, a linear problem, then we can approximate variable situations using linear approximations, and we can integrate those linear approximations. Uh, let's see an example of such a thing. 
Suppose uh, when a particle is located at distance x feet from the origin, it's given by the following force function, f of x equals x squared plus 2x pounds. Uh, that's the force acting on it. Well, how much work is done in moving it from distance 1 to distance 3? Well, from the previous slide, the work is going to be the integral from 1 to 3 of our force function, f of x dx, uh, for which we saw in the, in the description here that our force function is x squared plus 2x. And so integrating that, we get x cubed over 3 plus x squared as we go from 1 to 3. And that's all there really is to it. Now we just kind of plug and chug. Uh, we're going to get 3 cubed over 3 plus 3 squared. And then we subtract from that uh, 1 cubed over 3 plus 1 squared. Uh, simplifying these things if we can. Of course, there's a 3 here that divides as one of the 3's at the top, leaving a 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. There's two of those, and so we end up with 18. And then we're subtracting from that 1 third and into 1. Uh, 18 take away of 1, of course, is 17, so we get 17 and a third. Uh, I guess that's a minus, isn't it? Minus a third right there. Uh, so that gives us 16 and 2 thirds, or 16.666, you know, forever, the devil's fraction right there. If you prefer, we could write this as 50 thirds. Um, as this is sort of like a, I mean, this is a physics problem. A decimal approximation might be more appropriate, but we can write the exact answer as a fraction, uh, whichever you kind of prefer in this situation. So if you have the force function given to you, work is fairly simple. You just integrate force function with respect to position. That gives you the work. What can be a challenge, and we'll see this in the next couple of videos here, um, what can be a challenge is that what if the force function isn't given to you? I mean, where does this come from? Right? How does one model such a thing like this? Now, this is not going to be a physics course, so we're not going to go into every possible application of work problems using calculus. But to illustrate this technique of accumulation, we are going to look at a few examples from physics and show where do these force functions come from, and then show you how you can integrate that to calculate the work.